Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Dr. Asmad Yar Qureshi, Senior Lecturer, Department of Physiology, U Medical College. And today the topic of presentation of this practical is Intake Output Record or you can uh, just say Intake Output Record Chart in Bed Ridden Patients. So we will start. The first slide is that the uh, Bedridden patients. What are the bedridden patients? Who are the patients who are bedridden? So they can be. I have two points here, but they can be paralyzed patients like neurovascular disorder, which is stroke, trauma. Trauma means road traffic accidents or surgical patients after a major surgery. These are the patients that are more commonly on a bed in a hospital. Uh, I have given you a screenshot of an intake output record. It gives you on the left corner the serial number size, gives you the date, then intake. Intake is the amount of fluid they take in each day per 24 hours or per uh, the. And then is the output. Output is the amount of fluid that is excreted out of the body, and then. There are the notes. If you want to put any additional notes in intake output record, it's a measurement of all the fluid that the patient has taken and on the all the fluid uh, output of the patient in 24 hours. It gives us a vital information about the patient fluid and electrolyte status. Patient ka status kya hai? Patient ka fluid status kya hai? Patient dehydrated to nahi hai? Patient overhydrated to nahi hai? Patient ka blood pressure kaisa hai? Is he going into fluid overload? All of it will be helped by measuring intake output record of the patient. Now, what is the purpose of intake output record? <coughs> intake output record, it helps us to prevent dehydration of the patient. It helps us to prevent fluid overload. Because we are not giving fluid to the patient. Ko it gives us an accurate record of the patient, okay, how much fluid that the patient has taken in 24 hours and how much fluid that the patient has excreted the fluid. And it also gives us the assessment of the circulatory functions of the patient. Okay, what is the blood pressure? What is the pulse? What is the central venous pressure of the patient? Usually, yeah. Okay. Intake output record tells us, is the patient dehydrated? Are they hydrated? Jo, uh, what I have been talking in the previous slide, and is there any fluid overload present? Uh, if we see the water content of the body in infants, the water content is approximately 80% of the total body weight. In adults, it's about 70% of the total body weight. Considering the amount of water in the body, it's a high quantity of water, 80% or 70% of the total body weight. Its maintenance its record in bed written critically in patient is very very vital so we need to check it out and uh, because if there is any deviation from this fluid balance there can be serious consequences in the patients so fluid balance how we define fluid balance fluid balance should fluid intake should balance fluid output how much amount of fluid we intake should exactly balance the amount of fluid that is going out of the body. So fluid intake is the amount of fluid we take in the body. If we are talking about the critically ill patients, if they are uh, taking it orally, we need to record that. If there is any intravenous infusions, drips uh, that are going through that, we do record okay, how many liters, how many milliliters have been given to the patient in 24 hours and if th the patient is unable to take orally we put a tube from the nose and that goes directly into the stomach and that tube is called the NG tube the nasogastric tube and if we have given anything from the nasogastric tube that is the fluid portion we need to record it on the uh, intake output record and the fluid output what do we mean by fluid output how much amount of urine how much amount of fecal matter uh, is there any sweating or respiration? These two, sweating or respiration, is called uh, the insensible, uh, insensible water loss. So we cannot sense it. We have got a gauge in which we say that around 500 ml usually we perspire through respiration. Okay. 
what do we understand from neutral balance neutral balance is the amount of fluid that we take in exactly equals the amount of fluid that we excrete per 24 hours these values these equations are for 24 hours right 24 hours a day positive balance means if the patient is taking more fluids and he is excreting less fluid out of the body that is the positive balance means he is retaining fluid inside the body so if the if the fluid is retained inside the body the patient is developing a positive balance and if there is more fluid inside the body the condition is called edema so the patient is going towards edema negative fluid in negative balance what do we understand from negative balance negative balance means that if the intake the amount of fluid that the patient is taking is less than the amount of fluid that is that the person is excreting in 24 hours means the patient is going in a state of dehydration okay in a bedridden patient we need to see the following things these four to five things are very important to monitor is the patient taking enough fluids 1500 ml 1500 cc minimum so uh, in very easy terms we can say that a glass of water if a glass of water a normal glass of water contains approximately 240 ml of water so if we have, have to measure it in a crude way that is it that we measure it that we do it and if a patient has taken a glass of water or a glass of juice means he has taken around 240 ml of fluid he should he or she should urinate at least 8 to 10 hours and the best way to measure and the best way to take the record of the urine is to pass a urine catheter we pass a catheter and we see the amount of urine that is coming in the urine bag the urine bag is graduated it it's it tells you the amount of fluid or the or the amount of urine that the patient has passed in 24 hours or if we if the patient does not want to have a urine catheter then we tell the patient to urinate in a glass jar or in a plastic jar so that we can measure the amount of urine that the patient has passed in every void And the third thing that is very important is we need to see the temperature of the patient if the patient's temperature is increasing it can say that the patient is going in a state of dehydration what is the sweating status is he sweating very much if there is sweating so the water loss goes up so we need to take a record of that and if the patient is a surgical patient uh, we need to see the the amount of blood that is coming out from the wound that's usually you can see that the patients after surgery they have a big drain coming out of the abdomen or the surgical part and the blood is coming out from their drain bag continuously if the blood is coming out we need to measure that blood too it's very important okay measuring intake output record intake any ice any juice any coffee any yogurt any jellies any IV intravenous or tube that's what I've been saying the nasogastric tube feedings any liquid at room temperature jo kuch bhi humne patient ko diya we need to record it and the output agar koi vomit hui hai to wo kitni dafa hui hai how much urine blood how much the blood is coming out of the wound liquid stools how much how many times the patient has gone to the washroom and spends uh, past the stools or if the patient is been put on the ng tube is there anything coming out from the ng tube and if it's coming out we need to see how many ml is coming out and we need to record it on the intake output record uh, chart so urine output how much a patient urinates in 24 hours so in normal it is 24 hours a day and uh, in uh, these values are for normal adults normal is around 800 to 2000 or 2 liters per day 
if the amount of urine goes to less than 500 ml the patient is going in oligouria oligo means less urea means urine so oligouria means the patient is passing less urine decreased so decreased urine means or and urea means if the urine output in 24 hours moves to less than 100 and the patient is going in n uric n means a means no urine and if the urine is going at the rate of more than 2.5 to 3 liters per day means the patient is going in polyuria the urine output is going more so uh, this chart gives you a rough idea you can see all through it gives you from days to adulthood okay what is the amount of urine per day in mls that's a rough idea this fluid chart is very important usually it gives you the daily fluid balance of an adult of a normal healthy adult if say if if we say the ingested liquid is 1500 ml ingested food whatever we eat if the fluid content of that food is around 800 ml and the metabolism in the metabolism water is also formed so in around in normal healthy non exercising males the amount of fluid intake is around 2.5 liters per day output kidneys urine 1500 skin loss means sweating perspiration 600 ml git in the fecal matter 100 ml and lungs with respiration 300 ml so the loss of fluid from the skin gi and lungs these are called insensible water losses because we do not sense it so uh, around you can say 1000 ml if the urine if we calculate the amount of urine in 24 hours and we add in 1000 means that are the insensible body losses means the water that we lose from the skin respiration sweating from the git in the fecal matter and with respiration we are breathing every time so uh, the amount of fluid loss from these areas is called the insensible body loss Insens insensible water losses and that is around 24 25 ml so in this chart you can see that the intake of the fluids is exactly equal with the output that is the neutral balance 